morning party people. How's this for start today? Beautiful. So we're about to go train some push. Trained with my friend Murray this morning and he's much stronger than me, which is always nice to train with people that push you. So I'm just going for a ride on the beach there. Um, so we're going to go to that this morning and then breakfast and then we're going to go check out my ninja skills. A couple of years ago I competed in Australian Ninja Warrior and I haven't really touched any of my ninja training since then. So there's a, a place called Ninja Park up in Newcastle. We thought we'd go to play at, try not to break anything, have some fun. So uh, come along with the ride. Let's go. How cold are you? I I don't think I'm going to be able to take my jumper off. I'm wearing three layers, so at this workout, I'm just going to gradually be wearing less and less. Eventually, I'll just be doing this in my underwear. Um, today's workout is a push workout, which means chest and triceps. On the current program, as we've talked about before in previous videos, I'm currently doing heavier weight for less reps. So we're going for six, eight reps, heavier weight. So we're going to start with incline dumbbell press. Again, six, eight reps. I'm hoping to get maybe 42 kilos per arm. Um, we'll see how I go once we're warmed up. I'm gonna do some push-ups to get everything working now. I'm gonna introduce you to the camera. Oh, hey, hey, hey. This is Murray. Murray's like my very handsome, strong friend. Yes. Uh, so today, Murray's gonna join for the workout. We don't get to train very often together. He's just been in, where have you been? Nepal. Nepal. Just living, man. Getting out there and adventuring. Let's do it. So for me, one of the hardest parts about my current program is getting the weights in position. I'm not very coordinated in terms of like getting the weight up. Once it's there, I'm alright. I just feel like a bit of a, like a fish out of water while I'm doing it. So, Mario's going to spot me while I try and get the weights in position to start with. Then we should be okay, I hope. Thank you. So, one of the other things with my diet right now, while I'm trying to bulk, is that I mean like 4,000 to 4,500 calories a day, it's a lot of food. One of the ways I'm getting my carbs in is by having Intra Edge while I train. So this is by SciTech. This is, it's like a carb complex. So it's got dextrose in there and a few other forms of carbohydrates. Um, I'm using two scoops of this, which is about 60 grams of carbs. So it's a really good way of me getting in my carbs while training. Um, I like it while I train as well, because I feel like it really keeps me energized. Helps the protein synthesis. Synthesis, there we go. I'm too tired to talk. That's a bad start to the workout. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this, and it's also tasty. So it means I'm actually upping the amount of liquid I'm drinking. I'm a sucker for forgetting to drink water. So just by having a bit of this in there, it kind of gives me that extra reason to drink more water. So staying hydrated, getting my carbs in, getting a better workout. That's a win, win, win. Win, 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 win. Okay, so this is in our working sets here of flat bench. Um, six to eight reps. Did my first set at 100 kilos. Eight felt pretty comfortable, surprising because I was quite heavy on the incline press. So we've gone up to 110 here. And hope for the best. The whole idea with this program is that I should be progressing each week. So I should be getting stronger as I go. And as I put more weight to it, it should be easier. Um, so I'm sitting up about 81 kilos body weight right now. So hopefully that extra little bit of weight means that it's a move. That's what the science says at least. <laughs> Whether it actually happens. 
three, two, one. Now, I'm not coaching through the technique we're using here for bench, but if you do want to find out more about how to do correct form, I insist that you follow Milestone Strength on Instagram. Each week we do like educational videos, so we'll run through the techniques of like your basic compound lift, your bench, deadlift, squat, whatever it is, right through some more advanced work. Um, just kind of help you be better in the gym. It's all free, we want to help you. Make sure you're following Milestone Strength. I'll put the link down below. All right, last set. That's it. That's too pressy. Oh no, I'm press. Flat? Do you want to do a finish with a cable fly? It's even better idea. Right, let's do a dumbbell fly. Dumbbell spot. Incline or flat bench? Incline. The biggest game changer for me with them has been that like elbows and trying to pull them together rather than just like flying together, concentrating like bring my elbows up. I feel like the clench of the center of my chest, the engagement is so much more like active. Same, I used to feel that but now I'm really feeling the center of it as well. Fair enough. If you're not changing your outfit three times throughout the workout, you're not really working out. Okay, next up we're gonna do a superset here. We're gonna do chest dips, superset with a plate press. Now, with the plate press, you can do it one of two ways. You can hold one plate. What we're gonna do here is two plates. I'm gonna demonstrate here. So the whole goal with this one is to keep the plate pushed together. We're not using our thumbs, we're holding the middle of the plate. Back flat on the floor, pressing right up, and then down to your chest. Now by using the smaller plate, means actually you get closer down towards my chest and it also means I have to keep the tension in the middle to push the plates up. You can see that engaging right through the center of my chest while I do that. Talking is making this so much harder. 15-15. <laughs> Fifteen, Fifteen. Alright, 15-15. So we're going for more high volume on this one. So Murray's just had the idea to do 15 reps and then 15 reps. This is a psychopath. about coordinating your shaker with your singlet. These things don't just happen. It's definitely an accident. Last step. It's no reps, no rest. AMRAPs. As many reps as possible. Potential. As potential. <laughs> okay, so for this last set, seeing as Murray hates me, we're gonna do AMRAP, which is as many reps as possible without a break. We got 15 last. I'll be happy if I get 15 again, to be honest. 
Let's see how we go. You encourage me. Here we go. in my face on that. Let's go do that now. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel like that's lean. That one's pretty lean, I think. I'm a lightheaded. Uh, I'm so shaky. Do you want more? No, what about? What you want? I want 30. The world is spinning in my eyes aren't even open. <laughs> you know that feeling you feel like you're going around? Yeah. Oh. Holy oh, yeah. Go on in. 20, get the breathing up. 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, go on. 3, 7. Come on, good. Another 3 at least. 3, 8, 3, 9. Oh. You're wide away from me. 30. Is your head about to explode? Yeah. <laughs> sure, it is, yeah. Makes it harder. <laughs> <laughs> we good? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. One. You got three, four, five, six, seven. Between two, between three, between four, between five, between six, between seven, between eight. <laughs> I thought you were going to get 30 comfortable with that. One of them was about to tumble off. Okay. And land on me. Well done. Oh, thank you, sir. Finding the right handle that can make the workout or break the workout. My chest might break, but at least I'll have a nice handle to hold on to. I like to, when doing cable flies, face towards the mirror. This is not an ego thing. I find that this movement, because you're on cables, to be able to feel the stability, make sure you're pulling the right way. Watching yourself do an exercise does make a difference. So that's my personal preference. I like to actually actually see what muscles I'm using, and make sure I'm keeping like any unevenness. What's the word I want there? Unevenness. Sure, that word uh, in check. Um, so we're gonna do cable flies from the top. So you're gonna do three sets, and then we're gonna go from the bottom for three sets. I'm not going too heavy here, I've got 12 and a half kilos per arm. This one is all about form, because you're doing it on the cable as well, it means there's constant tension through the movement, whereas when you're doing a fly, you get to that certain point and you're not having tension anymore. When you're doing these, there's tension throughout the whole movement. Similar motion to before, but this time we're going from the bottom. Again, trying to bring out all those up, clenching through, but pulling up this time instead of pulling down. Right, the 
chest component of the workout is done, we're gonna move on to triceps as this is a push workout. So we're gonna go here with a superset. We're gonna do V-bar pull downs, superset it in with overhead rope extensions. Going heavier on the V-bar pull down for eight to 10 reps, and then whatever I can get it out, because that's hard. <laughs> So the next part of the triceps we're going to do here is we're going to hit the inside part of the tricep. This is an area that gets, I think, neglected a little bit. So we're going to do a movement that I've only just recently been taught, which I really like. This is like a cable crossover variation but with a tricep focus on it. So not too heavy. Getting both here. You're sort of like sitting down, getting in position, scat back in position. And you can see we're starting to bend and just straightening the arms out. Now, because you're not coming up in a position, it doesn't matter which hand's on top here. The whole point of this is hitting that full contraction at the bottom and then slowly lowering up. So that's number one. Number two is wide bar underhand. Keep it down. Elbows tucked into the sides as hard as we can. And again, Really concentrating, keeping that flex at the bottom. Down. And slowly lowering back up. The pump on this is real. Okay, we're finishing off the last thing here of triceps. We've got dumbbells, we're doing tricep extensions uh, on the bench here, so. We're done, finite. I did very well then. That was a big session. That was quite long, longer than we anticipated. Um, but feeling good. That Cytec pre-workout is still running through my veins right now, which is good. If you are in Australia and you want to use the, uh, the milestone code to get 10% off Cytec products as well, there is a link below. You can use that for creatine, like the, my, my weight, my super, I can't even talk about Superhero, which is that pre-workout I just did then. Um, we got the carbs, that intra edge we talked about earlier. All that is on there, so use Milestone 10, you get 10% off on the website. Link is below. Miles, good sesh. Good sesh. That's fun. Good sesh. On to the next one. Welcome back. We're on the road again. Uh, heading up to Newcastle now, which is like an hour, hour and 15 drive north. We're going to a place called Ninja Park. This is where I used to train when I did Australian Ninja Warrior. Okay, off he goes. And this bloke is tonight. Run of the course. Yeah. He's going for a fast time, needs to keep up. Is terrific. Yeah. Got something to prove tonight. Yeah. Straight to the top and pulls himself up. Have a look at every single easy, muscle easy. in his body. You've got your eye on every part of it. Um, I haven't touched much of that style of training in almost two years now, so we figure I put on some weight. I've changed my training up. Let's see how I can go. And, doing that agile ninja stuff, so should be fun. Could be a laugh even if I fail miserably. We'll find out.
Thank you. Welcome to Ninja Park. So this place, it's been over a couple of years when Ninja Warrior first like launched in Australia. Um, these guys are like just one step ahead, which is perfect. This is like just like an adult playground. So come on, I'll give you like a tour around here. So they've kind of set up essentially the way that like the course runs to start with for most like the Ninja Warrior course. So you've got like the quintuple steps. Um, you've got some like hanging parts, some road parts, you've got some elastic. Some balancing, some gripping. There's a lot of forums that comes into ninja training, so that's where I'm a bit worried that I'm gonna die today because having trained chest and triceps this morning, that push factor, I don't know if I'm gonna have the grip. Um, yeah, so much to play around with. And then you got the wall balls coming in the corner over there, which is the part that everyone loves trying. Also, we'll play around. I brought my shoes today. I brought my ninja shoes that I wore for the actual show. Little toe shoes, which help with grip, so we'll wear them and get playing. So these are my little toe shoes here. So like you can see, they've got the split toes. I got the flat rubber, so you can see it has like a split grip in there. But it's a really soft rubber compound, which grips to like perspex really well. Um, they're not the most comfortable things to get on though. I'm not used to having my toes separated in shoes. So. I'm ready to walk up walls now, literally. Like a ninja. So this is like, I think it's regulation height for the warm wall. This is like the final obstacle in the first round of Ninja Warrior that like, this is the bit that people freak out about the most. This is like a vertical ramp. Okay, the next challenge we've got here is on the warp wall, but without getting the run-up momentum, starting at the base of the wall and just launching up. So this takes like a lot of like explosive strength, coordination, and then just like power. So. Instantly feels almost impossible. So the hard part about doing the warp wall is the techniques like one, two, three, and then jump. You're jumping off that third step. I did one out of this gym in Western Sydney, which I'll put the footage up here. It's a 15 foot warp wall. This is about 12 foot. Um, 15 foot warp wall was insane. And it was one, two, three, four, and you jump, but there was no lip at the top to grab hold of. So as you'll see in the footage, I, um, I missed a few times and it's a long way down. Perseverance got us there. All right, let's have a play. Let's gonna start this the right way. We're just gonna go through the course, see how far I can get through in one take. Um, why not?
that. <laughs> I'm done. The door's defeated me. Oh. Alright, well, what I've learned from this is being heavy is making it a lot harder. I'm out of practice. That's what we're here for. Let's practice. Oh, Nathan, it's like we have some spectators. Yeah. Just what I wanted. Uh, I wanted an audience to watch me fall. That's great. So, unbeknownst to us, they booked in a school group here. So, we're just gonna hang out with a whole bunch of kids right now. Which is fun and expected. All right, Alex here has got a challenge for us. What have we got, Alex? Sweet, so we've got a climbing challenge here today. It's pretty much you have to hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. It is brutal. I've never seen anyone finish it. It is just absolutely brutal. So, we've got number one, and over there, number two. Back here, number three, over there, number four, and up here, number five, all the way up there. Number six is all the way at the back. Number seven, some kids pulled it off, it used to be down there. And number eight is down the very, very back corner. So, there's two rules. Number one, your hips have to stay below that top bar, so no walking on top. Rule number two, nothing's allowed to touch the blue floor. This is a very hard challenge. Good luck. Thank you, Alex. I think thank you. The, the hard thing here is that it's not you've got to do it in sequential order too. So if it's like, oh yeah, one and I'll do that one. It's one, two, where was three? I've already lost three, four. You're essentially crossing the entire thing seven times. Can we set a timer for this? Yep. We're on. to hell. Get that pump on right. Pick up. Yeah, sick. Nicely done. Oh, now I'm dead. So, he joined the floor here. Same. The hard thing. So on season one of Ninja Warrior. You might have find clips of this to show this. I came off like in the finals. Uh, I think seven obstacles in to the vertical poles. But he is sliding further down those poles. Oh, he is really feeling this now. Every muscle in his arm is burning. This is hard for him. Look at them. They're dropping off the bottom of the poles. Sliding down. He won't want to get his hair wet. Looks like he spent ages doing that tonight. You can see it on his face. He's in pain and he's gone. Just when we... Because you're just going and you've got that adrenaline pump and you're swinging and grabbing. The last bit to be not holding that grip. Your forearms are just fried. They won't grip anymore. Right now, like, I can barely move my hands. Oh, I need to rest. <laughs> I don't, you can't feel through the camera how pumped my forearms are right now, but like, that there is just constantly like pumped, flexed. I can't do anything about it. I'm not fit for Ninja Warrior anymore. Well, as my hands, I don't know if you can see that, but they're 
If I do too much more swinging, I'm gonna split my hands open. That's gonna ruin my training for a week. So we're gonna leave it there. We've learned today that I'm not fit at Ninja Warrior anymore, but it's still a lot of fun. So I, the thing I really like about this sort of training is also doing it kind of competitively, having a, having a play with someone. Um, so maybe we'll try and bring someone along to compete with next time. Time to go eat? Yep. Time to go eat. Treat yourself. I feel like I've earned this donut now. And you feel them pretty well, so you can have a donut too. That's the oh, way that works. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to leave it there, guys. Wrapping up. We'll see you guys next time.